sometimes you have to look back to move forward, back to where it all began. Most legendary stories have one beginning. Ours, it has four. The gallant pioneers. The four lads who had a dream. A dream that continues to be our reality. Our badge is the embodiment of this dream. Since 1872, it's been our legacy. Sure, it's changed over time, but what it stands for has remained the same. It's built into the fabric of our club, the fabric of our city, the fabric of the four, inspired by the first and inspired by the past. We were here before everyone else. Glasgow is our city and Ibrox is our home. Pride, loyalty, glory. But it's more than that. It signifies a way of life, the success, the legends who came, who saw, who conquered. The legends who are no longer with us. The heartache, the joy, the euphoria. From the very beginning of our story, from there all the way to here, still winning, but never standing still. A celebration of the first 150 years. This is a memento of where we were, who we are now and where we are going. Getting ready for the next chapter. Our history is our present, and thanks to the four, we have a legacy of ready. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, folks, good evening and welcome to the Blue Heart 1872 podcast. Tonight, join us, usual suspects, North of England, Stuart Finlay, John McKinnon from Brisbane, Australia, and Wolf Marshall from up in Aberdeen. Everybody knows Wolf because he never misses a Rangers game home or away. Um, before we go anywhere, folks, tomorrow at 12 o'clock in Waterstone, Silverburn, Mark Hately will be there signing his book. So we're giving that a plug. If anybody's about before the game, they can go to Waterstones and meet Mark, get the book signed, and have a photo taken. And next Sunday, the 12th of December at the Hearts game, Mark will be in the Mountain View Tavern in the Shankill Road in Belfast, uh, also doing his book, and be there with the fans watching the game. So, anyway, good evening, guys. How are we? Good. Good, Gary. All good, Gary. Everybody yeah, good. happy? Good. Everybody yeah. enjoy? Right, okay, so we'll go straight back to Wednesday night, the Hibs game. Uh, obviously, it was a bit of a struggle. We got there in the end. Uh, quite a bit of a good finish for us. What was your thoughts, John McKinnon? Uh, stuffy for performance. Uh, I don't think we look like as if we were going to lose any goals. Uh, you know, uh, McGregor, you think about it, didn't have, a, didn't have a save to make. But equally, at the other end, we didn't, we didn't trouble the, the Hibs goalie much uh, in the game. But the longer the game went on, I thought there was always a chance we would, we would nick it. You know, we would, we would get, get up the pitch and, and do something in the other, the, the other box, you know. Uh, yeah, and thankfully we did. You know, good result. One 0 is my favourite result all the time. Take it any day. <laughs> right, uh, we've heard that before. <laughs> okay, uh, obviously, Stuart, your thoughts, mate? Yeah, just reiterate what John said. Um, I thought we we looked we looked more solid at the back. I'm not saying we were exceptional, but we looked more solid. Um, we would we seem to drag a bit in midfield that we were talking about all, uh, offline. But yeah, as Will said when we were talking about offline, if we'd have got that goal by Morales just on, on half time, it would have been a totally different game. But as uh, the second half went on, yeah, I knew a chance was going to come. It was. And when it did, um, courteous of uh, Mr. Porteous, um, yeah. And what I will take it penalty, that's what I'll say. Straight down the middle, bell damn it. Yeah, obviously, well, if you were there, um, as always, happy man, Wednesday night, I was thinking about you. 
Yeah, I was happy, happy leaving the ground, but it was. Uh, I just, I honestly couldn't see where the goal was coming from. As the boys have said, we didn't, we didn't really create a lot, but we didn't, didn't really look in any danger of conceding anything. Um, which, is, which is good when you consider that just ten days before Hibs had tore us at Torres and you were in the yeah. first half hour at Hamden. Yeah. You know, so that's that's been addressed and that was good because I mean the defence wasn't having its best game. I mean, everything Connor Goldson tried didn't work. He kept, you know, he was he was he was trying passes that worked last season. They didn't work on Wednesday. They were going straight to Hibs players. We're going out of play. We weren't. You know, McGregor came for a couple that he punched. That I thought he should try to catch, but he got under him, so that was okay. Well, at least um, he came for the same That's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Usually, it's like I said, beauty of goalie. <laughs> T-Rex. Um, but uh, he couldn't. I couldn't see where the goal was coming from. Yeah. And then, right, Ryan Kent just just kept trying. The good thing with Ryan Kent, if it doesn't work, he keeps trying it. Yeah. Yeah. And against yeah, Portis, like- against a guy like Portis, there's always a chance because I mean, he's got to be the, the dark, He's got to be the thickest football player in Scotland. Because he keeps doing the same thing, he just keeps doing the same thing over again. You know, if a, if a player makes a mistake in a game, you think right, you learn from it. Don't do that again. He does it all the time. Does it all the time. Points, I like it. Yeah, Absolutely. that's that's five points he's given us this season. Because yeah, we were struggling against them at Ibrox till he got his jaws. Yeah, and that game was Peter Lout and Lil on Wednesday night. I should have cracking coat. Um, he's just a, a poor man, Scott Brown. Uh, he's hard. Uh, well. <laughs> A gift that keeps givens, Ryan Porteous. Obviously, um, Geo's come in. He, I mean, when I was watching the game, I was thinking what Geo had said. They basically said he'd seen things he wanted to change, and I wasn't seeing very much changes on Wednesday night. Um, maybe the defence was a bit more at it, but I, 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 I'm looking at you, Wolf. I just couldn't see where any goal or anything was coming from. It just looked flat. It, it just looked, you know... Just every time we get the ball, we're too slow on the break. The amount of breaks we had, we give the ball away. The, the thing is, though, the thing is, though, Gary, you're right. We were slow in the build up, but Hibs, Hibs weren't giving up any space. You know, it's quite difficult when they when they they've basically parked the bus in defence. There's not a lot of space in behind them, so you can't throw throw over the top and tell somebody to run onto it because yeah. you know there is no space here. I mean, you can't really expect. Uh, Mr Van Bronck has to change too much because he's not really a lot of time on the training pitch but he's to me it's noticeable that, that we'll now play with wingers I mean in the previous incarnation we played with two number 10s yeah. but we're now, we're now playing with wingers unfortunately one of them is Yanis uh, Hadji who's about fucking half a yard slower than me you know he's got all the skill in the world yeah. but he's got no, absolutely no pace because if he had any pace he wouldn't be in Scotland let's be honest Yeah. you know so whether Tomorrow, I know we'll come on to it later, whether tomorrow he maybe leaves Hadji out and puts in a bit of pace down the wing, whether it's Sakala or right, I don't know. But if he's going to play with wingers, Hadji can't be one of them. Right, OK. Right. Yeah. And obviously, I mean, we, we, we're chatting, I know we're going to move on till tomorrow, but I, do you know, I mean, Nick, for me, I thought the, the, the subs on Wednesday night, I thought Sakala should be on early doors. I thought Morales was having a nightmare. But Van Bronckhorst said he was going to put uh, in his press conference when he, I don't know if it was the after the game one, but he did say he was going to had Sakala ready to come on. And then we got the penalty. So that's why and they put Lundstrom on instead of Sakala to, to sort of just tighten up. up. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean that that's face when we did get the penalty, I mean Nick Riff showed uh calm, didn't he? He was calm the way he put that home. <laughs> I didn't watch it. I turned away from the screen. I just didn't yeah. go to that stage. Oh yeah, I'm fake up. Listen to the commentary. Yeah. So. Um, and then obviously, so after that game, we, we had the usual uh, outburst on Twitter from the other side. John Hartson involved, you know, about the penalty, been soft penalty, been given the Rangers. And not that this podcast is going to talk about them, but last night I seen a goal scored by them that was probably a good yard, yard and a half offside. And I ain't here to pundit say anything today. No. Shocking. Well, I mean, all one way traffic. Well, I, as I said earlier, before we come online, Gary, I I was out last night. I haven't seen, I haven't seen their goal, but I mean, I haven't heard anybody tell me that it wasn't offside. But our penalty was the stonewallest penalty you'll ever oh, see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was I was behind that goal on slightly on the angle, so I was as you as you look as you look into the goal, I was on the left hand side of our stand at the front. And I'm looking straight at it. It was right. It was. It was all. I almost did exactly the same view as the reverse TV angle, and Stonewall penalty straight away. Yeah. I actually thought he wasn't going to give it because yeah. he took him. He took him. He took what seemed like an age to point to the spot. I thought he's not giving that. Yeah. 
Yeah, but it was an absolute, sto- absolute stone wall penalty. So how yeah. anybody can say that it wasn't? I mean, I know there wasn't a lot else in the game for them to talk about. Yeah. But I mean, they're even trying to say it was soft. That's not soft. Then you've got the <laughs> the ludicrous situation of the Hibs manager coming out saying, "I don't think it was a penalty, but if it was the other end, I'd have wanted it." Yeah. So, yeah, that just says it all. <laughs> you know I mean? it, it doesn't matter if it's a soft penalty or a hard penalty. Nah, a penalty's a penalty. A foul's nah. a foul. If it's in the box, it's a yeah, penalty. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But what I'm trying to, what I'm getting at is obviously the silence today from the media. Um, yeah, but, 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 but Gary, we all, we all know we all know they've got an agenda, and it doesn't things like things like I just let them wash over me because they, they don't. You know, I mean, even the same with the the bottle incident when Barry McKay got hit in the back by a bottle when he was taking a corner. Yeah. Okay, I believe they've lifted, they've lifted the guy for it, but there's been, from what I've heard, there's been absolutely no coverage of that either. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, no, no. I don't, I don't read, I don't read the press. Right, I don't, I don't buy papers. I don't look at their websites. But I believe from listening to another podcast earlier that somebody had a look at the Daily Record Sports website, and it's the twenty fourth article on their website. The fact that something got thrown at Barry McKay. So there's yeah. twenty three or twenty four things more important. Yeah. In Scottish yeah. In, in in football than that. In the, yeah, in the Glasgow Times it says appearing to hit Barry McKay. Appear well, it didn't hit Barry McKay, and there was more than a, there was there was actually more than a, bo- a bottle thrown at Barry yeah. McKay. There were several objects, but yeah. obviously last Sunday, I mean, Rangers fans have had a film with a few snowballs, and we got more we got more coverage for the snowballs than they had with a bottle. That's yeah, but I think I, th- I think that's probably because the the referee made an made an absolute howling arse of that yeah. because there's no. There's no way you should have held the game up for eight, eight or nine minutes. I mean, it, the snowballs were, get, were getting a bit ridiculous, right? But I mean, once they'd, they'd stopped throwing them, for, for the referee to say, well, we're going to have to clear this goal mode, for a start, one guy came out with a shovel, mm. which, was, which was ludicrous, right? But as the guy, be, as, as the guy beside me at the, the other end of the park at Livingston said, what's he going to do if it starts snowing? Is he going to stop the game? Because there's <laughs> a little bit of snow falling on the pitch. Mm. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, yeah. Just can stop throwing them and just go on with the game. Yeah, yeah, I know it was a bit of a farce to one guy out trying to clean up snowballs, I mean, mm-hmm. but um, it's just the difference in the media, the way they, they, they've swung it, yep. you know, um, obviously. Now, obviously, there are a lot of rumours going about today, but we've talked about this before, and that is uh, rumours, Rangers are denying it tonight, funny enough, that Connor Goldson has, is definitely away, saying no to the contract. Uh, Wolf, you pointed out earlier on to me this morning, we were talking, obviously, over the messenger about, now, where is Jack Simpson? Well, there's a, there's the thing. I mean, he hasn't. I haven't seen him since since a new manager came in. I don't think he's been in a squad. I don't think he's been in a match day squad. I don't know if he's. I don't know if he's if he's injured or. I haven't seen a lot of the training videos, so I haven't been able to see whether he's is about he's about the training or not. But I mean, I mean, does does a manager just not fancy him, or is he injured, that's, or, that's or where is he? From the a lot of the you photographs know? and all that, the training videos. I've not. I've not. I've hardly seen him. You've not seen him. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's, I mean, it's, it's been on here, Mark Misson. Um, obviously, Goldson, what, what do we do? I mean, they come January, do we take, the, take an offer, let him go? I mean, it, no harm to Conor Goldson, but on his performances this season, he is not good enough to play in the Premier League. No, no, no Premier League club's going to come in and buy him on the form he's shown. No, on last season performance, I can understand it, but this season, the way he's been playing, no way. But on, somebody said to me this morning, when Conor Goldson looks down at Brighton and sees Shane Duffy starting every week. Well, see, that, that's the th- <laughs> but that's the but thing he, as well, Gary. Shane Duffy right? done his job last season. Yeah, but, but, the, but I mean, down, down, down in England, the, the right the Scottish League off has been some sort of joke league. Like Shane Duffy yeah. couldn't kick his own ass last season. And as yeah. you said, he's man of the match performances this year. Yeah, yeah. Starting so, every week for Brighton. So to me, that... That's good for Scottish football because it makes it look as if it's actually not the deadly league that they seem to think it is. So Goldson probably will get a decent deal, whether it's Premiership or top end of the Championship. The problem we've got is in January, if somebody comes in with, say, a couple of million pounds because he's only got six months left. Yeah, we'll sell him, yeah. You know, to to take him. Can we afford to sell him because we've got no cover? Yeah, but there's there's nobody to cover. And maybe it's time to bring the boy Leon King and start dipping him in the game. No, no. No. I was at the um, I was at the B team game against Cove on Tuesday night, and I mean Cove's a big physical strong team. They're playing the uh, Scottish Scottish League One, and they're at the top of it. Finland. They've got a lot of players that played top level. Two or three guys that played with Aberdeen and 
uh, Inverness and Ross County and the likes. And guys like Liam King, they're just not strong enough yet. You know? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're clamouring, you know, the boy Allegri scores a hat a couple of weeks ago, put him in the first team. These guys are nowhere near ready yet. Liam King's yeah. not ready for... He would do you to come off, the, put him on the bench, come on to see a game out with 10 minutes to go for a couple of goals up, that's fine, give the boy a bit of experience. But you couldn't rely on him as a, like a replacement for, for Goldson or, or for Ballingham or anybody. He's, just, he's not ready yet. He, can, he will be, but they're just too, too lightweight at the moment. Well, let's, sure, let's talk, let's, let's talk ahead, Aston Villa are going to try and get him on a development fee this season. His contract's up at the end of the season. Leon mm-hmm. King? Yep, yeah, yeah. it was in the... One of the, the, yeah. the he, went, he, he, went off inj- he went off injured the half-time on Tuesday. I don't know how serious it is, but he, was, he felt something, yeah. so they took him off. Right. There's a um, problem there's three or four Premiership clubs watching because he can get him on a development fee for 200 grand. Yeah, he's, he's a good player. He is a good. He is a good player, but he's just not ready for. He's not ready to be a mainstay in the first team yet. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, he, uh, obviously, Stuart, would you make a move for John Suter from Hearts? In January. Um, yeah, but also at the same time, if it came if it came to it, I would bite the bullet with Golden, um, give him to the end of the season, and if he wins his league, it's, I know it's a big gamble, and this is only a personal personal opinion. Um, it could be a big gamble, um, but if we keep holding him and that shows that we're going to let just let him go, we're going to give him the chance to move on for uh, for nothing, so he can actually negotiate his own real terms, win as a league. Yeah, bye bye. I personally think he wants to be in January. Jackpot. What's that, John? I personally think Golson wants to be in January. Just going with the, the interview after the, the, the cup semi final and just the way he's playing, it just doesn't look as if he's. Yeah. To me, it doesn't look as if he's happy. He, he I mean, a, a lot of the comments, quickly. a lot of the comments coming in on my screens, all you know, get rid of him, get shot of him, get him away. Um, yeah, but but a uh, good thing. What's that? CGM fifty five on YouTube says Golson will need replace him, but do we have the money to do it? That's a big question. <laughs> But do but do do we just do we take a do we take a risk and bring Katic back? Well, that's the next question. You've, well. you've, you've got to you've got to. Yep. Yeah. Right, yeah. Good evening, bring, Hamish. Yeah. Bring Katic back soon as. Hamish I mean, I would have Dundee. But you've got to remember, Holanda will be back at the training. Uh, is it first training next week? There's something between Holanda, Balogun, Katic, and that, another one. <laughs> see that that's that's the situation that we're in because. But uh, manager said today the Balogun will be back back training with the squad on Sunday. Yeah. Helander's supposed to be back sometime this month. So if they if they both come back and we bring back bring back Katic, right? If we let Goldson go, do we need to sign another centre half? And if we don't sign another centre half, what happens if the two of them break down again? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I, it's I, it's I one still, of them. I still think we need to sign a centre half. Well, if I'm not, I'm not saying we, we don't. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. When it, it is worth going for John Shooter. But, uh, I would, I would, I would take John, I would take John Suter on a pre-contract and yeah. try and sign him like we did with Scott Wright, but only if Goldson goes. I wouldn't bring Suter in in January unless Goldson leaves. Yeah, now Curry Muncher, our favourite, <laughs> for our favourite name on here, said he would rather have Carriage back as Goldson and as Goldson and Hell Under is due back. Um, John Suter for me, I think that's. I mean, I, I agree with you, Wolf. I would try and have. John Suter on the on the pre contract, and if we do let Golson go, I'll be going to Hearts and saying, "All right, we'll make you an offer of so much. We give him one of our players and get Suter yeah. in." But the thing that worries me with Suter is Suter's injury prone. Yeah, I don't, I don't know so much, Gary. If he's if he's injury prone, he just doesn't seem to get he doesn't seem to get niggles. He seems to get really bad injuries. You know, yeah. when he gets injured, they're serious. He, he's not one of these players that that gets. In for three weeks, out for two weeks, in for three weeks, out for a month. He seems to just be out long term when he gets injured. Yeah. You know? But now, but he's had a couple of bad injuries when he's been young, so hopefully that's his injury he's done. Yeah, Here's go ahead, Stuart. You know? Here's another thought. Right. Uh, Gio, Roy Mackay, uh, Boss, they, they, they know the the whole of the Dutch market. Um, what's the stop and grin to maybe like some of these smaller clubs like VVV Venlos here even um, and picking up a decent centre half from them? You're just showing off. You know, you know, you know some of these obscure Dutch teams. Yeah, but but, but, but actually, but, um, try and uh, because out of all the Dutch players that's joined us over the last 20, 30 years, one dodgy one, and I, and I wouldn't even call him a dodgy one, and that was Bert Cornerman. 
he was better off as a as a defensive midfielder than what he was as a centre half. Um, but yeah, the, the the management team will get the contacts. Now, so if, here, if we're not going to go John Shooter, go try and find a really good centre half that's in the Dutch league in one of the smaller clubs that would that would jump at the chance of coming to to Rangers. A bit like what Van Dijk done at Celtic. But they, they paid they paid was it two point five million for Van Dijk from a small club in in, in Holland. Right, but here's a very important point. Stuart King makes it on YouTube. We need to buy defenders as African nations as in January. <coughs> yeah, Bassi, Bassi, and Balogun will be going to that. Bassi, Balogun, Roof, Aribo, Aribo. No, no, so Roof Jamaica. He won't be going yeah, to that. Uh, right, going Aribo, to that, but, yeah. but you're going to yeah, lose Saka, yeah, Sakala, yeah. possibly. Yeah, yeah. Will Zambia qualify here. <coughs> and the problem, the problem is if. Um, if um, if if Nigeria we'll look at the three Nigerian lads, if Nigeria qualify gets to the final, they're going to, that the finals. I think uh, the, the first week in February. So yeah. at the start of the tournament, they'll just miss the winter break, which isn't ideal from a training point of view. But at least they don't miss games. But they'll miss the first four games back. I think if they go all the way to the final. Yeah, um, CGM YouTube saying that's a risk in January going for someone from Hald who does not know the Scottish football. Suter is ready to go. Uh, it's, it's a it's a similar kind of league. It's a physical league. It's it's to me it's a no brainer. Yeah, but it's, I would, not, it's not a gamble. I I would, to, I would be looking. I'd be looking. Sorry, Gary. I'd be looking to bring in John Suter. But as I said, I'd be I'd be looking to tie him up on a pre contract. And if Goldson leaves, bring it. Try and bring him in then. But I wouldn't. I would bring back if I bring him back. Cottage. I wouldn't try and bring in Suter as well. On top of what we've currently got, because he would he'd never get a game. He just wouldn't yeah, be sitting there picking up the way he's doing nothing. You're, you're, you're saying he's a, he's a very injury prone player, and when he gets an injury, it's a serious one. Yeah. Uh, so, why take the. Now, don't go wrong, I, I, I rate John Shooter as a, uh, as a defender, but why take the gamble? There's nothing to say they can't go, they can't go down the route you're, you're speaking about and bring in. Somebody that they maybe know about in Holland that we've never heard of in January, and then we bring Suter in in the summer because there's yeah. going to be, you know, a, a lot of changes. I mean, John Suter's definitely leaving Hearts. He's definitely going somewhere, and we should be top of that list trying to sign him on a pre-contract because yeah. hopefully, hopefully he's over his major injuries. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Nick, Curry Muncher again has said here, um, guy, do you think Gio will tap into the Chinese league? I'm not so sure of the standard over there, though. Now, is that a market that Gio might look into? No. You t- do you tell me? You tell me a, a, who's a good Chinese player? That you know. I mean, I couldn't. I, I, I mean, I couldn't tell you a good fucking. I couldn't tell you a good Japanese one either. But that, that Celtic thought out with that Kyogo or whatever. Oh, they were they were more private years ago. Didn't they? Not do we played one game. I think uh, yeah. against Clyde right enough. The one they lost in a cup. But, but that that whole that whole do we thing though, that was nothing to, that was nothing to do with a guy's ability that was just trying to tap into the Chinese market. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, yeah, I don't think. So. But I, I mean, if Geo was got plenty of contacts now. Even out when you say we talk about Holland, don't don't forget Geo was working for uh, Guardiola at Man City for a season. Yeah. So yeah. there's a yeah. there's a few kids down there and a few players on the brink that we may look at. But for me, it has to for me. It would be John Souter because John Souter knows the game up in Scotland, knows the teams, knows the players he's playing against. Um, I, I think we should definitely try and get him in. Um, it's just this fucking Goldson's just holding the whole thing up. I think we're all of the, all of the same consensus about John Souter. Um, yeah. we, we would like to play him there in the famous. Yeah, it's just it's just when we bring him in, whether we bring him in in January for a fee. I mean, the thing is as well, trying to get him for a fee. There's nothing to say that. We'll pay what else are asking. I know. Yeah. And I read, I read the uh, this morning down here, uh, the Nottingham Forest that are, are sniffing about him. Now, That's why we need uh, to get him tied up. Yeah. Uh, if, he go, if he goes, if he goes, if he comes down here, he'll he'll flourish. But the thing well, is, but, sure, he might he might not want. Sorry, he might not want to go down there because his his brother went down south. Yeah. And his brother's just had a right bad time with it. He's, his brothers had injuries, and I think his brothers. I think his brother still signed for Hull. But is it Stoke? The brother, the brother Stoke. Is it Stoke? He's at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's never. He's never been seen because he's injured all the time. 
Yeah, because he's injured all the time. You know. Must be that family. I mean, their their uh, their their grandfather used to work with me back in the, a few years ago, and apparently Harry yeah, was a better player than John. He's worked all the time. No, he was always here. He's actually, believe it or not, he used to be, he used to, he used to be, he used to be a policeman. He was a cop. He was a copper outside Dundee. And then he moved to Aberdeen and he got he got a job with the company I was, I'm working for. And uh, he retired about four years ago. I think he moved to Australia to be near some of his family. Yeah. Did you know John? No, I didn't. I didn't. He did, obviously, but I didn't. <laughs> otherwise, I'd, otherwise, I'd be telling them what to do with himself. <coughs> Okay, folks, uh, if you're on the Facebook page uh, watching this, uh, please like and share. If you're on uh, Twitter, retweet. I've just got a message on my phone making me laugh. And if you're on the um, Twitter, retweet, and YouTube, please <laughs> subscribe. I'm getting my words all mixed up. Um, obviously, I'm <laughs> some of the stuff coming on my screen. I thought we'd looked uh, I know, no, no, no. I'm a, um, <coughs> they will... They will sniff around Suter if we don't go with that. That's, that's a comedy. We know that. I don't mean, like, Suter's, if you're saying, Stuart, you're saying Forrest, are definitely yeah, Forrest, interested in Suter. Forrest were interested in um, one, of the, one of the online blogs I was on. How do you say other uh, one that went down, the big thug from Aberdeen went to Forrest, didn't he? McKenna. McKenna. Yeah. Uh, how's how's McKenna. he getting on down there? He's playing regular. Is he, huh? Oh, good. Yeah, he's playing okay. regular. I don't know how, don't uh, know how well he's playing. I'm not... I'm not really a forest aficionado. No, no, no. So where Matthews no, asked me what, be on this podcast. <laughs> what what the wine choice is? It's Malbec tonight. I'm having a I'm having a Malbec tonight. You know that's the first this week. What's John McKinnon on water? Oh, he's on Iron Brew. Iron Brew, I, I, Iron Brew out in Australia. Well done, John. You could tell I had a few last night. Did you? Uh? Nah. Uh, I'm on okay. I'm still, up, I'm still up at Rainbow Beach. Oh, you're on holidays, good man, right? Okay, so yeah. CGM55 says, Suter is a leader. You can tell he would be a player that would thrive for us. Forrest will only move for him if Worrell leaves. So Joe, Joe Worrell must be on the move. And he was fucking rubbish, Joe Worrell. I hope he's not on the move up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, well, no, terrible. Uh, all right, I'll put some stuff up here. Um... Now, I'll put this up. Al Simpson says there's some tasty Chinese out there. Number 18 chow mein. <laughs> I better take it. I better take it. Anyway, folks, keep the questions coming in and we'll, we'll, we'll put them up. Um, okay, so, folks, we're, or, we're on to tomorrow. Uh, Dundee. What changes are we going to see for the Dundee game? Uh, I think Davis will be dropped. I think you'll start Lundstrom. Um, well, it'll be McGregor and Goals. The back, it'll be the back four will be the the, uh, the normal uh, midfield. Will be Lundstrom, um, Aribo, uh, Hadji maybe like slightly in front. I think Scott Wright will, will start the game. Be Scott Wright and um, Kent, and I actually think he'll actually start Roof. Instead of Morales, I think Morales will drop tomorrow. You see, I I don't think he'll start Roof, but I think he should. Yeah, I would, but I'm not picking the team. Yeah, but I don't, th- Stuart. I don't. I don't think Scott Wright will come in because we haven't, we haven't seen him in the last three games. I don't. I'm not sure if the manager fancies him. If well, he's going to start, if he's going to start somebody, he'll, he'll put he'll put Sakala in there. Well, it's got to have be somebody. that has got uh, some trickery and some pace if we want to play wingers. Yeah. Um, so that's what that's why I, I, I said Scott right. Um, maybe he's not showing it in training, but I do think it'll be a game that he could maybe step in and do something. Although you've got, you've got to say that Josh Mc, Mc, McPake is, has got Dundee playing some decent football lately. Um, the they're, 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 away, they're away records, they're away, sorry, Stuart, they're away records terrible. That's by the they've Bible. Three by games the Bible. Away this season. Yeah, it's by the Bible, but they'll always, they'll always give us a game. They will. I thought, I, I think we should try and limit the changes to maybe one or two, and that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Too much fucking about the team, like dropping yeah. three and four every game. <laughs> there's yeah. no, there's no sort of consistency with it. What about that? Um, we've won four league games. The last four league games have won on the bounce. It's the first time this season we've won on this run. So yeah. I think yeah. one or two changes maximum. 
Maybe it's like it's also, it's fair enough, you know. What about Scott? It's also, no, it's, it's also noticeable as well that we've gone on this one of four league games that we're winning in a row. We haven't been changing the keeper. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I mean that was one of you were on about yeah, early season. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, Chop, chopping and changing the keeper. Yeah. And we were, we were losing goals all over the place. We're, we're going to with a consistent back five through necessity yeah. because of injuries and stuff, but the goalkeeper's the same all yeah. the time. Yeah. You know? And as you said, Stuart, he's starting to come for stuff. So is that yeah. because he, he's got more confidence in what's around about him and they've got confidence think, in him now? I think it is, but also at the same time, about some of the criticism he got from the, the, the semi final above about, yeah. uh, about not coming for some of the balls and being, and being uh, likened to a T Rex with short arms. Um, he started to come for him. Uh, even even it was just to punch the ball. Uh, I noticed about McGregor on, on last <coughs> night. It, 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 there was a few crosses come in, and he, he tended to punch a lot instead of trying to catch the ball. Yeah, yeah. I thought that, that, I thought he should have caught them, but as long as he gets it clear, that's all that matters. Yeah. Do you not well, think Scott? Ar- do, you, do you not think Scott Arfield will, will start tomorrow? Um, I think. I thought Arfield was decent when he came on on Wednesday night. Oh, yo, yo. I love Arfield. I think he's he's just the, he's probably the only player we've got that play that ball, that pass, and, and move into the space. Yeah, mm-hmm. really he makes runs in behind. We don't seem to have a another player in the midfield that will do that. Yeah, you know? like you see the goal at Livingston. Yeah, I mean, who else makes these runs in our team? Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah I forgot. Yeah. The, the, apologies, I forgot about Arfield. So yeah, I, I could see Arfield starting because um, he's the only player really that goes from that midfield role to be on the strikers which creates well, space for the front three I, th- I think I think the one thing we can take from the, the last three games is we're not going to be playing with two with two holding midfield players like we, we did under Gerard. yeah you know he would whoever we played he always had, he always had two holding midfield players we don't seem to be going down that road anymore so I could see our field coming in possibly for Davis if he's got you know if he's if he's got Kamara Kamara already in there and this might sound a bit con- controversial, but because we're playing a different system on that, do we need the amount of uh, midfielders that we have in the squad? So possibly there could be some moving on that could actually free up some money that me- that could we could actually spend to bring in. Like we're talking about another centre half. Well, yeah. I mean, it was, it was I was at the I was at the AGM on Tuesday, and you know the contract situations were, were discussed, and what Ross Wilson said was that there's players. First team squad players that aren't contributing, they will be getting moved on. There's first team squad players that are contributing, obviously they'll be getting they'll be in discussions. And then there's ones that are kind of flying about the periphery that they'll have to decide what to do with them. So there will be some getting moved on. I mean, like say, you know, Brandon Barker, I mean he's he's still at the club, but he's nowhere near the first team, so he'll be getting shifted on. You know, guys like that. So that's going to free up money because these guys aren't aren't exactly on two and six a week. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you say that, Stuart. I, I, for me, come the end of the season, I don't think you'll see Stephen Davis at Rangers next season. So I think this will Hello. be Abel's last. This will be his last. I think they'll be last for Ray. I don't. I can't see Van Bronkers keeping him. Well, I hope we do in a coaching capacity. Well, you know, because I know he's, he's he is doing his badges at the moment, don't you? Yeah, but I, I just can't see him getting a contract as in. Stay in, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think there'll be a, there'll be a playing contract, but I'd love I'd love to see him stay at the club in a coaching capacity. Yeah, um, that's so what I think he wants And as well says, people like Brandon Barker, you know, um, something. So, uh, I keep saying every week, and it will happen some week. I think Patterson will start tomorrow. <laughs> it's got to happen. It. It's got to happen some week. You no, know, I keep saying it, but it's going to happen. Patterson see, will um, start. I'm not sure if Patterson will start tomorrow, but I would lay decent money on him starting in Leon because it's a dead rubber. I think he will make some changes next Thursday over in France, and I expect Patterson to start. Now, whether he starts at right back for for Tavernier or whether he starts him in midfield with Tav behind him, I don't know. But I think he will start in France. But I don't expect him to start tomorrow. No, I, I'm going to I'm going to think you start tomorrow. I'll get a race all week, Stuart. <laughs> Put him on for first goal scorer. Ah. If he doesn't come on, you'll you, you get your money back in anyway. Ah, exactly. Um, obviously, and somebody has put put us up, uh, put a thing up. Uh, no, a uh, good question. Uh, and what they're saying here is so Ryan Jack missed, wasn't in the squad against Hibs, oh. but he's back in the squad tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. So, oh, 
Was he left out of Hibs for what reason? I just don't, don't think he's fit enough yet. Yeah. Match fit to contribute to a game like that. Yeah, well... Well, I mean, the, the, man, the manager said in the press conference this afternoon that Ryan Jack's in the squad for tomorrow and he will feature on Thursday. At some point, yeah. At some point. So whether that means he's planning to start him in Leon, Because as I said, Leon, Leon's a free hit. Still want to win the game because there's a lot of money involved, but... It, They've won the group. We finish second. Whatever happens, so it is a it is a free hit. So he yeah. can, you know, he, yeah, they can they can make a few changes and put a few players and give them game time. And again, yeah. in Europe, you've got the five you've got the five subs. So there's a there's a good chance to give a number of players decent game time. Yeah, yeah. The Curry Monster, Curry Monster wants to see um, he wants to see Roof, Kent, and Sakala start <laughs> up front the three. Well, that would do. Can't argue with that. It's, it's, yeah, a, that good, it's a good front three. Yeah, I mean, but um, so we we're going to leave Alfie. I mean, I I don't think Alfie will start tomorrow. No, I, I don't think, think he will. Either. I think Alfredo needs time on the bench. Personally. You know that, and I, and I love him on the bench, but I think he just needs that. Um, knowing that he's not going to be playing, that he's going to. Yeah. And that man, John, and Gio's got that man management st- uh, style that he can actually get him to understand that. But as John said, we don't want to be making too many changes. No, you know, so two or three, three at the most. But well, yeah. if you think if you think about Morelos, he played well in the Sparta game. He didn't play well against Livingston. He didn't play well against Hibs. Yeah. But see, I you I wouldn't can, even be you taking. Want, you, I wouldn't. You've got to drop him. I wouldn't even be taking Morelos over to France. You know what I mean? Unless unless he uses it as a getting to know his squad exercise, I'd be leaving the likes of Morelos, possibly Tavernier. I'd be leaving. I'd be leaving them here. Because there's no need for them to come tomorrow, Wolf. Yeah, I know that. No, I know that. No, I know that. I know. But so with with that with that in mind, I think he might play Morelos tomorrow. I'd like to see Morelos rested as well, but I think I think he might start him. As it's I not, said, Stuart, if I just picked the team, rest, I'd pick Roof. It's not, it's not being rested. I think he needs to have a spell on the bench just so he can revigorate himself and come back and be able to try and prove a point. That's what Morales is at his best, when he's trying to prove a point. Yeah. When his, when his back's against the wall, that's when you see the best of him. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I think it was, he needs an enforced setback and give... Roof and Chakala the chance. And then if he sees them scoring goals, then he's really, really got to fight for his place again. Yeah. And, he, and, he, and he will. He'll, he'll get back to being the main force. Because that's the kind of player he is. I mean, we Sakala had an um, instant impact at Livingston last Sunday. Straight on, bang, goal. You know. Yeah. I think he deserves a, a start. One, a one, thing I would, one thing I would like to say about Fashion Chakala. And I seen a, 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 a tweet on Twitter today. Was there was a wee boy who went to the park? Seen that, yeah. Fashion Sakala gave him a, a big yeah. hug, and he didn't know that he's was it his father that had just passed away. Yeah, yeah. And Fashion Sakala has asked to see the wee boy again. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. I thought that would that he does everything brilliantly, and then he does something else like that that just makes you fall in love even more with him. Yeah, yeah. So we're chatting with uh, squad players, but there's uh, Steve Patton is saying we can let, there's another player, Andy Firth, Barker, Jack Hasty. There's another one. Well, and, Andy Andy Firth's a coach more than more than he is a player. He's yeah. he's registered as a player in case we ever need him. But he, he, he's he's a coach. He's a coach primarily. Now whether we still need him as a coach, I'm not quite sure, because we've got Colin Stewart there as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, they they took the coach they took the coach and remit off a. Of, off of Jermaine Defoe because we don't need him and Roy Mackay as striker coaches. So yeah. I'm not I'm not sure that we do need the two goalkeeping coaches at first team level. But I mean if I, I mean Andy Andy Firth won't, won't be on won't be on a great deal of money anyway. But I mean certainly Jake Jake Hasty and Brandon Barker I mean a lot of people probably don't realise they're still at the club because we've not seen either hear of them for, for months. But yeah. he's he's out in loan at Thistle. He's at Party Thistle. Is he's he not really doing it. Has he not really been doing it there either. No. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there's all sorts of comments coming here. 
Jack Simpson needs to go as well. I don't know. Um, I don't. Know. Do you think Jack? Or do you think Jack Simpson's had a fair crack at it? No. I think he's. I think he's had chances. He's, he's, he's had games coming in. Uh, I think it was a Motherwell game, wasn't it? When he when he fucked up at the end of the game. Yeah. Give the goal away. So I think that's that's killed him. Actually, to be honest with you. Uh, he, he's had he's had games. He's had chances, but I don't know. Yeah. Good enough. Now, I've seen, um, I mean, we chat with a player and I highlighted this week, and that we've been linked with um, Wesley Hoyt, and he played at Southampton a couple of seasons ago, centre half. Um, we weren't fucking very good for them. <laughs> <laughs> so they shipped him out, but I see uh, uh, Gio's been linked with him. Thank uh, you, Gary. We're, we're, going to, we're going to be linked with absolutely everybody for the next six weeks. Oh, yeah. Um, unless their name's Finn Barrow Shaughnessy, we will be linked with them. Even then, we'll probably link to them. Well, well yeah, probably, good for, yeah. if, if Finn Barrow's a decent centre half, I fucking take him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, so, as you say, a lot, a lot of we're going to be linked with everyone, and it's, it gets close to the time. You know, um, I mean, when, when does the window open? First of January. Yeah. And when, when do we play the other mob? Second, Second January. of January. Fuck's sake. You know, I'm, right. I'm, so, I'm so glad this, this it, it, the last three years it's been played on my birthday on the 29th of December and every time I've been fucking shaking myself because <laughs> it would spoil my birthday but luckily we've won them yeah yeah I mean oh, I don't know so obviously Wolf another thing because you were there we weren't there and that was the AGM midweek how yeah. impressed yeah, how was... impressed how impressed <laughs> it was just the AGM was just the typical AGM there wasn't anything else shattering um, the resolutions got passed but we knew they would anyway the re-electing the board members and stuff just the kind of routine stuff they've got to do um, they, they did they did a, a nice kind of kind of Q&A, Q&A thing with um, Nick Thompson from Rangers TV right and interv- interviewed uh, Stuart, Ro- Stuart Robertson um, along with James, James Biscrove and and who was the other one he interviewed uh, no, 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 can't remember. George. Sporting, direct, sporting director, what's his name? His name's going right out of my head. Ross Wilson. Ross Wilson. Ross Wilson, that's the fella. So the, the sort of four of them sat on a couple of couches and they interviewed them and they all spoke really well, but it's all sort of stuff you'd expect them to say. You know, we've got this happening and that happening. There was nothing really earth shattering. And then we've got the usual kind of questions from the punters, you know. Mm. And I don't, I don't understand some people's rationale. I mean, the first question... And if the guys are watching, I apologise. But the, f- the first question was, we've got an anyone, everyone campaign, meaning everybody's welcome at Ibrox, but that's as long as you've been vaccinated. What are you doing to kick back on the vaccine passports? Something that yeah. runs close to your heart, Gary. Mm. And Stuart Robinson <laughs> rightly said, look, it's the law, right? We have to uphold it, it's the law. And the guy yeah. couldn't get into his head that if Rangers don't do the checks that they're supposed to do, don't get a safety certificate, none of us can go. Yeah, I mean, it just yeah. I don't I don't get people, and then you know, there's people going on about the all the all the trouble in Broadby caused by the bad organisation. Most stuff that Rangers can't, I've got no, they've got no power over, you know. Yeah. As they said, as they said themselves at the time, they're responsible for what happens at games at Ibrox, and you know, for European stuff that happens in Glasgow when we're playing. They made all sorts of promises in Broadby, and, and they got broken again, and they've made representations and all that sort of stuff. But I mean, the interesting things that came out for me really were um, they were talk, they were talking about the the kit deal with Castor, yeah. and it sounds it sounds very much like it's going out to tender. They're not just they're not just going to renew with Castor. They're going to put out to tender because they've now got they've now got um, you know sales figures to back up and stuff. So the way they were talking, I've got a feeling that Castor is not not long not long for this parish, and we'll maybe right. go with a, a you know a more recognised manufacturer. How long have we left for the Castor deal? It's a three year. It's a five year deal, so there'll be three years left. Right. But that's if it goes. That's if it goes. That's if it goes the term. You know. Uh, the the other thing that was really interesting, the the account showed that we needed seven and a half million to see the season out. Well, that that funding gap's already been been covered. Yeah. So yeah. Wh- whether the compensation we got for the previous management teams part of that or not, I don't know. Nobody said, but 
whatever it's been, the, the funding gap's been covered, so there's no problem at all. And the reckon will be, will be breaking even very, very soon. You know, that's without selling a player. That's whether, positive. <coughs> whether, whether the, we don't really need to sell players from Ross Wilson was to tell other clubs, listen, you're getting nobody on the cheap because we don't have to do it. Yeah. And yeah. it was a bit of bravado or not, I don't know. But I'm quite cynical when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, but well, no, we, we, were, oh, we were both there on Saturday night when, when George Leatham stood, stood up and, yeah. and said exactly the same thing. <coughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was nothing, AGM, it's, it's, there's, a, there's an hour video on, on Rangers' YouTube channel about it. Uh, they've got the whole thing on there. And it was, it was nothing else, Shart, and it was never going to be. Um, it's just quite interesting to hear it from them at the time. You know, yeah. the, the, one, the one thing that they were, they were adamant, uh, adamant on, I go ahead, go, have. Go, go, go uh, ahead, the one, the, the one thing they were adamant on, there was there was a lot of chat about the disabled facilities at Ibrox. Yeah. yeah. And Stuart Robinson admitted that, that the disabled facilities at Ibrox are an absolute shambles. You know, especially for the wheelchair users, it's really, really poor. And they're going they're going to deal deal with that. And then somebody mentioned safe standing, and that's not even that's not even um that's not even on the on the table. They've got no interest in safe standing at all. Right, okay. So obviously CGM55 on YouTube says Castor has built their business off us. I think that's 100% correct. Yeah. yeah. We have put them on the map, you know. Um, <coughs> obviously they're down now in the primary league. They're with Newcastle, Wolves, uh, the West Indian cricket team. I mean, for me, I think it's... And, and I think the, it's been fucking... This, the, the quality stuff that we were promised has been shit. Well... I've had no problem with the, apart from the sizing, um, I've had no problem with the actual quality of the, of the kit. Nothing no. came off in the wash or anything like that. Yeah, well, it's no, not. I'm, I mean, I'm the same. You see the stuff on, I mean, uh, people put their stuff, their shirts on Twitter with things missing and... Um, all, uh, all the stuff I've got has been quite good. I've been yeah. quite I think it all depends what sweatshop which came from. Either from uh, Taiwan or... Where was the other place, Wolf? Turkey. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Turkey, Turkey, yeah. Turkey and Taiwan. Yeah. Turkey, the, the, uh, thing, the thing is, the thing is, though, you're going to get, you know, there's go, there's going to be errors in in kind of you know stuff made by all sorts of companies, and because there was loads of, there was loads of bother with cast over the delivery of stuff, people just went mental when they, when I mean some some of the mistakes they made, some of the kits were ridiculous, upside down badges and all that. Well, but things like that are going to happen. Things like that, things like that are going to happen in a very small number, but as as is, as is usual with these things, the small the small minority are very vocal. Yeah. And then it all gets blown out of proportion. I mean, the stuff, I'm like Stuart and, and John, the stuff I've had, and I've got a number of cast all items, and the stuff I've got has all been really good quality. I've had no problems with any of it. But, I mean, the, the sizing is a bit... I mean, I bought the, the long sleeve golf top, although I don't play golf, but it's a long sleeve blue top to wear under my shirt at games. Yeah. And I accidentally ordered it in size small instead of large, and it actually fits me. <laughs> so I'd hate to think how big a, how big a large one would be. I... Uh, but everything, yeah. everything else on the lads, it fits no bother. Yeah. Um, but as in, um, for me, uh, uh, meeting the demand, I mean, we all know that they had trouble getting the shirts out in time because the amount of demand. <coughs> Is that just because they're new to the game? or the, Gary, I think the problem the first, the first year was they said the new strip was going to be available on, I think, was it July the 1st or August the 1st? August the 1st it was, right? Now, that was a marketing mistake by them because the, the previous contract didn't didn't finish until midnight on the thirty first of July, so they couldn't send anything out till the first of August, and they're telling people your delivery date's the first of August. Right. Yeah. But it couldn't yeah. be because they couldn't send them out early because if they arrived early, and people started wearing them, the they get hammered by that by that fat co by that fat cockney cunt. You know what <laughs> I mean? Because they'd been in breach of contract. So that that to me was a big one going by Castor. They should have said we'll start sending these out. On the first of August, when the contracts thingy, because they seem to sort that for this year, they said the release date was whatever the release date was, and the stuff arrived at the time. Yeah. So I think they have learnt lessons from it, but you know they've been good for us, and we've been good for them. I mean, the, the yeah. money, the money that we're raking in, and it wouldn't have matter who it was. You know, wouldn't have matter who it was that we went with. We would have made a fortune out because people were de were desperate to buy kit. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, uh, I remember about the, the, the mount traveling all through the airports all you know especially through England down around Stansted and all over the years every time I look into a sports shop in the airport in Stansted this the other mob shirt was there but ours was never there 
yeah. you know that and for me i think we need to be along with like a nike or adidas or some of the bigger kit manufacturers for me like definitely Surely the big boys would want that. I mean, the Aberdeen and all these clubs are all wearing Adidas. They should be yeah. getting in there. Yeah. I mean, we were the first club actually in Scotland to, to actually. Well, I think Aberdeen were, and then we, we, we were the sort of got the big deal out of them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so you're talking, you're talking about airports, Gary. Yeah. Cracking, cracking photograph on Twitter the other day about the, the Celtic shop. At the, the airport with the red, white, and blue Christmas tree right in front of it. I've seen that. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah, seen that. that. Right, another thing for you, son. It's just a player. It's just flashed. Somebody's flashed up on my screen there. Bakuna, where is he? Silence. It's a good question. Yeah. He was on the he was on the bench, and I'm trying to think which game it was. He was on the bench. Was it Livingston? Yeah. I can't remember. He was on the bench one of the games recently, but I don't I don't think he's been on the bench under Gio. No, he has. I'm sure he has. Yeah, yeah he has. He was on the has bench in the, 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 the League Cup semi final and against Livingston. Yeah. Was he on the bench against Livingston? Sure, he Pretty was. Sure, he was. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I saw him warming up. I could be wrong. That's a, um, obviously, Easter's pieces went missing as well. Um, so. RFC56 on YouTube says if safe standard increases our capacity. Then it I'm all for it, but it's not it's, the club. It it's, one, it's one for one. Yeah, it's one because for one. It, because it's real seating to put in. Yeah, even yeah. if it's even if it's safe standing, you'll still get an allocated place to go to. Because I'm pretty yeah. sure, John, you asked a question about three or four podcasts back about about that. Is it will it increase the capacity? And it's not. It's one for one. Yeah, uh, obviously. They are for you, sure. Marlin says this is all for Marlin. See big jigs on tonight. Right, I've got, I've yeah, got a big, I've, I've got to give a big shout out. Um, jig is there. Um, <laughs> we were, we were. That was well practiced. Only rode offline, Gary, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, jigs there. We were, we were at Lounge Seventy Two in Huntington on Sunday watching the game, and John Leach actually gave um, Maureen the jig cut out. Uh, it was up in the wall in the lounge part of uh, 172 and give it to Morning's a wee present. So a big shout out to all the staff and punters, John Leach at Lounge 72. Really appreciated go. for a fantastic Sunday. Gary, Gary going, going, back, going back to Castor and the fact that we've put them on the map, I've just had a text message from a very good friend of mine and it says, mine say that Castor have got the England national cricket deal as well. Oh, yeah, England? England, the England cricket, the England yeah, cricket uh, team as well. Uh, they've got the West the Indies, ladies, the kids, the whole, the whole lot. I knew they did the Windies. I didn't know that they got England. Yeah. They've obviously got the England, just got the England deal as well. So yeah, you know, they'll certainly they're doing, do, they're do well over the success of us. They're doing yeah. Aston Villa season as well. Yep, yeah. <laughs> saw that very. Yep, yeah, saw that. Aston Villa next season. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 yeah. That was announced. That was announced about three days after like Gerard joined them. Yeah. Well, there, there, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. That's a. That's I think amazing. Gerard's actually. I think Gerard's got a stake in that company, definitely. Do you think so? Yeah. But you surprise me. Um, and then yeah, I, I, think he might have, I think he might have funded that, funded those boys to, to to start off, maybe give them some start up, up cash. Yeah. No place down here in Hampshire to buy Castor kits. Order from Rangers Direct. And that's true. Obviously down here. <laughs> I mean, if I go into any shop down here in Southampton. I can't see. I can't get a Rangers top, but I can get the other crowds top. You know, yeah, Gary. Gary, when you're when you're strutting your stuff up the King's Road in Chelsea, you'll get it in the Castor store there. Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Just Gary, Gary, typical wolf, eh? Uh, um, okay, so uh, CJ, and this is obviously Bakuna. He says he was on. He was on the bench for the Euro game. Yeah. Bakuna. Um, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, hmm. Curry Muncher says, I just think Bakuna thinks he's too good for this league and it's based on nothing. I don't know. Uh, they are CGM saying Castor, Rome, Roma as well. well. The Prince Roma. Well, they're, they're, cer they're certainly achieving what their business plan was because they said within, I'm sure this when they, when they, when they announced their contract, they said that within, within five years they wanted to have at least two, possibly three premiership clubs and somebody abroad. So they've done that. They've now got the three Premiership clubs with Villa next season. 
And if they've got Roma, that's one abroad. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. So yeah. They, seem, they seem to be going from strength to strength. So whether it means in a few years there will be something big or not. But at the end of yeah. the day, for, for me, right, I don't really care who makes your kit. Right? As long as, as, long as we're making money out of it. As yeah. long as as long as we, it's decent and we're making money out of it. Mm. And we yeah. seem to be making a shit we're making a shed load of money out of this. Yeah. But um well for be nice to see the kip available everywhere you see the other crowd, you know, that's a hundred a hundred percent, absolutely hundred percent, Gary. Yeah, hundred percent. You, know, you I, know I believe I believe the kit's available in Sports Direct, but if you've got one of them, but you better not <laughs> one of them, I don't I don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one of them down here, but yeah. I, I don't go in there. Um Right, okay, so folks, it's nearly an hour gone, so that's it. If you're on the Facebook page, folks, please do me one favour and share the one last share. Twitter retweet, and if you're on YouTube, subscribe. Okay, so uh, here you are, I'll put this up. Stephen Strachan says, bring back Nike. I would have them back at a drop of a hat, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. 100%, 100%. Yeah, yeah. You, re- I mean, you, remember that, you remember that night day with a home against the way? I, I remember that. Uh, when, 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 the away, when the away Rangers team won 6-1. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. Great, yeah. uh, before we go, then predictions for tomorrow. Uh, we'll go to John McKinnon because morning time for John. John, <coughs> I'll for go you. four nil Rangers. Not wow. You like a one nil, John? What's that? You like a one nil? You don't like a four nil. Oh, you like a one nil? No, not not at home. No, not games against Dundee. Do you know what I mean? I'll take it. I'll take it if we're struggling, you know what I mean. But I reckon at home we should tomorrow. We should be. We should be going out and sending a message out tomorrow. Okay. This is the game we should be, be banging goals in. Yeah. Get the um, Stuart, we'll go for you next prediction. Uh, right. Five one. Five one. And Wolf. Well, John stole my thunder. I, I um, said on Twitter earlier, 4-0, so I need to stick to that. 4-0 Rangers. 4-0. Right. Yep. I'll, I'll go... Uh, <coughs> I'll go... Fa- no, 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 no. I'll go 5 though Rangers. Wait you see this. Wait we'll, you see this. We'll struggle and scrape a 1-0. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll t- I, right now, I'll take that. You know what? I'm going to back 1-0 tomorrow. I'm going to back 1-0. Keep your phone on during the game, Wolf, anyway, for the week. I'll be sending you a ping in your message as the goals go in. I'll probably not get it because the reception at Ibrox is fucking shocking. Is it That's so what I'm is, is, is the Wi-Fi not connected down there or what? No? Yeah, but it, it's a hit and a miss whether it works or not. All oh, right. As okay. soon as everybody jumps on it, it's still, it's still not... I mean, they got, they got it working during the summer. Yeah. Well, that was fine, but they tested it and they, obviously they tested it in an empty stadium. Yeah. As soon as everybody's <laughs> in and using it, it doesn't work. Okay. Um, Obviously, before we go, I I, I have to give a punt now, folks. You'll probably see on the the Facebook page tonight. Join us next Sunday, and you shall remember this. It's not Mark Hitley, but his boy Tom Hitley. Tom Hitley's going to be joining us playing out in Poland at the minute. He had a spell at Dundee Motherwell, Uh, and we'll hear whether Tom was really close to signing for Rangers or not. Um, There's always been rumours McCoy was going to sign him, but. Anyway, we'll ask Tom directly. Um, tomorrow, folks, on Waterstones at Silverburn. Again, I have to plug Mark Hitley's book. You get down there at 12 o'clock. Big Mark will be there signing books, doing pictures. and You can go down there and meet him. And then, obviously, next Sunday, uh, Mark will be in the Shankle Road in the Mountain View Tavern. Uh, good luck to him going over there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Especially with a dodgy ankle. No bad, Barry. <laughs> hey? The He's still got his no dodgy He's still got his dodgy ankle, so I hope, I hope he doesn't have to get out of there in a hurry. Uh, I know, I know, I know. But uh, no, he, he, he'll be over there next next Sunday watching the Hearts game, and they'll be doing a few, um, he'll be doing his books and signing and all that there. So anyway, guys, thank you very much. Um, and if you stay on, have a wee word when we're finished. All right, guys. All right. Good night. Cheers, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining. Oh, sorry, folks. I don't know what I've done there. It must have been a bit of an error. So, folks, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, 
obviously I can ask you all to please like and share. We get this podcast out and about. Obviously, um, Alex McLeish will be coming on very soon to the podcast. Hopefully, when Tom Hitley comes on next week as well, if you tune in, his dad Mark will join us. I'm sure he will join us for t- ten minutes. And I was speaking to a few other ex Rangers today, and uh, they're keen to come on. So we're going to have a load of players coming on, but that'll not be the after Christmas. So, folks, if you're on the Twitter, please retweet. And if you're on Facebook, like and share. And I hope you enjoyed it, folks. Good night.